Welcome back to the Freeport Connection with Tommy with a new look and since I moved from another previous location this is my new look so far. It may go back to the original. Wait, wait and see. Okay, this was uh, this is uh, about the results for Superstars for the Raw brand and also Monday Night Raw that sucked tonight big time. Even with the return of Kevin Nash again on Raw. Okay. Well, first, here's some WWE news. WWE's online web, web shakeup in which Brian Kalonowski, executive VP of digital media, was let go as Stephanie McMahon took over the web division and merged it with the magazine division. It's just the first of several corporate shakeups that have started with the removal of COO Donna Goldsmith. Uh, according to an inside source and confirmed by a major player in another division in the company, WWE Chairman Vince McMahon is taking the stock drop as a lack of investor confidence in the company and is going to revamp the corporate side in order to hopefully boost the stock. Good luck. Vince is keen on revamping the consumer products division as well as the sponsorship team which has already started to be, as we were told, gutted and rebuilt. Vince, uh, Vince is of the mindset that if only he, Stephanie, and Triple H are left standing in the next set of changes, so be it. Our source told us, uh, right now in WWE, no executive is safe. There has been discussion with, within WWE lately about the company looking to see what cruiserweight or light payboy talents are out there and signing them to developmental deals. And some of the developmental talent I, I will let y'all know about later have been released. It hasn't been confirmed yet. WWE will be, hope, will be doing a full-fledged revival of the cruiserweight division, but they are interested in bringing talents who fit that bill. The idea of the like, Cruiserweight will give guys like Evan Bourne or Sin Cara someone to work with and would add a quality of wrestling to WWE's undercard, such as maybe, possibly, the tag, young tag team of the Young Bucks of now Ring of Honor again. Max and Buck of Generation Me from TNA, which I hope they do. But according to them, they don't want the hectic work schedule for WWE, but if the money's there, fellas, take it. Okay, and uh, speaking of that, uh, this goes back to Triple H and changes he is making as he is slowly taking over day-to-day -day control of the company. Jimmy Wayne Yang, former, formerly of uh, WWE, who had a pay-per-view in TNA one time, uh, announced today on Twitter that he received payment finally from the TNA Wrestling after performing or the organization in late June in their monthly, in their, their X Division pay-per-view. And he wrote, Woo, 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 finally got paid. I guess, a better, I guess it's better, better late than never. First of all, they wrote him a check, and it bounced. So I guess it was clear today. Uh, Yang complained recently on Twitter that a check issued to him by the organization bounced when he attempted to deposit it into his banking account. He was called unprof <coughs> unprofessional by an office employee for drawing attention to that matter. I would have done more than that. I would have took out the office and some of the people involved. Damn it, if I'm going to work for your company, I damn well better get paid and not wait 60 to 90 days like some of these mystery shopping companies. Okay, uh... SoCal Val was that was okay. What's TNA news? Okay, uh, in her first post WWE appearance, Melina managed Eric Young at Saturday's Family Wrestling Entertainment event in New York City. She led the TNA star to victory as he captured the FWE Heavyweight Championship 
in a three-way match against former talent uh, Charlie Haas and Jay Lethal. If you're not familiar with Jay Lethal, he was former former TNA as well. Okay, breaking news: uh, Matt Hardy was arrested over the weekend for DWI. Uh, North Carolina's Fayetteville Observer has released new information regarding Matt Hardy's car crash and subsequent DWI arrest on Saturday afternoon. He had no injuries from the car crash. And it was not his first car crash, I was told. Uh, okay, I, uh, I was, uh, so I was read. Uh, okay, uh, according to a North Carolina police officer who was at the scene, Matt Hardy was not drunk, but appeared to have taken some type of impairing substance at the time of his car crash. Well, Hardy was said to be traveling more than 55 miles an hour, but less than 70 miles, miles per hour, when he crashed his Corvette into a tree. Well, I guess that Corvette was totaled since the Corvette's plastic. Okay, uh... Hardy was not injured from the crash like I described earlier. Hardy submitted to a blood test Results are currently pending. Well, he stated that he did take it and it was, he was clean. But he was arrested and charged with driving while intoxicated and exceeding safe, safe speed. The impairing substance that Hardy was under the influence of is not known at this time, but should be made public once the results of the post-arrest blood tests he took are made public. Melina Perez continues to stir controversy even outside WWE, as reports surfaced last week, that she re uh, recently released that the, re re the recently released diva is, seek is now seeking three thousand dollars and first class accommodations to appear for independent wrestling events. Women superstars uncensored, who is advertising for her to appear at their Breaking Barriers 2 event on November 11th in Union City, New Jersey, says her reported asking price is untrue. Okay, back to uh, Matt Hardy's thing. North Carolina Court's website lists that Matt Hardy is scheduled for court in Moore County on September 28th to answer charges from his arrest this past weekend. Hardy has been charged with driving while impaired and in the fraction of exceeding safe speed. But it, does anybody do that? Uh, a search for the in North Carolina Courts website also reveals that Matt Hardy is scheduled for court in Wake County on October 11th for a single traffic charge of reckless driving with wanton disregard of the safety of others. This is apparently a continued case from an earlier date. Well, so both Hardy's cases are continued. Hmm. Don't figure Matt Hardy was arrested on Saturday in North Carolina for driving while intoxicated, says he says he's innocent. In response to fans who were discuss discussing his arrest, Hardy wrote on his YouTube channel, wrote on his YouTube or did a video, hmm. I took a breathalyzer immediately on the spot and it ran clean. Zero. Nothing. Nada. Zilch. This was a think about peeps. There's more to this story than meets the eye, Matthew. Hardy posted another long response regarding the matter, but immediately deleted it. Hardy's contract with TNA Wrestling was subsequently terminated following his arrest, so he had double, uh, double uh, wrongings on him from Saturday. He hinted on YouTube that a return to WWE could be in the cards. Thus, uh, about a month or two ago, didn't they, uh, him and uh, Jeff were stating that they were coming back to wrestling. 11, 11, 11. So, stay tuned to see what that 11, 11, 11 is. And uh, I was reading on JR's barbecue that uh, JR had commented on that, and he said, that's likely to happen to Matt Hardy that uh, will return. Uh, the Women's Wrestling League issued a statement on Twitter regarding the matter which, which reads, We will tell you now 
and squash rumors now. We are paying nowhere near that whoever leaked. That must have had an agenda, and they were uh, uh, speaking of Molina's $3,000 price. Molina poked fun at the rumor after arriving to New York City last Friday for an autograph signing, she wrote. Just got off the plane after, after sipping on mimosas and taking a, a good long nap in first class. Ready to party in, in, in NYC, cuz why I'm Molina, bitches. Uh, Rebe Sky announced that she has re-signed with Lucha Libre USA. So, if she has re-signed with Lucha Libre, that would counter the WWE comments from Jeff and Matt Hardy. Unless it was that six, uh, well, it could be six months. But no, it couldn't be six months. So, take it from there. I don't think she's going to WWE with... The Brothers Hardy. Okay. Since, uh, okay. Speaking of Reby Sky, WWE offered Sky, a former Playboy model, a developmental contract last year, but was forced to decline due to her, her contract with Lucha Libre previously. Since then, she has undergone wrestling training with Matt Hardy, her boyfriend, and competed at numerous independent events. Mick Foley confirmed on Twitter that he recently filmed an episode of Life Swap and got a haircut. He wrote, Extremely happy I made the decision to do, to do Celebrity Wife Swap. I've laughed a lot, learned a lot, and got a free haircut. And uh, just... Uh, the, uh, he did the pound free hair cuts rule. Whatever. Uh, what, what, those of you who uh, do Twitter, tweet that and see what you get. Okay. Major fireworks on the last day of wife swap filming. Thankfully, a pro wrestler was on hand to serve as the voice of reason. And that was uh, from Mick Foley's thing. In an update from earlier this month. We're going around at Raw with that Rey Mysterio has a torn ACL. Well, Rey will re reportedly have surgery later this week and be gone for at least six months. He's finally having the surgery that he's put off for like eight to nine months already. There's been lots of talk lately about Mick Foley making his WWE return. Word is that so, if Foley and WWE agree on something, he will be returning in late fall. Foley will reportedly be involved in the John Cena vs. Rock storyline going into WrestleMania 28 and possibly act as a mouthpiece of sports for The Rock when he can't be there live in person. That's the Rock and Sock connection. Okay. On about the next new uh, well. It's believed that Foley won't return for a full-time TV role, but will work a legend deal and, and do appearances of, and other gigs for the company. At one point, WWE plans for Big Show to make his return from a storyline injury on tonight's role from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada at Rexel Palace. But they did not use him. He was, he was scheduled for a, ma uh, I believe it was a dark match main event, but it has not been reported, so there, there will not be a report on that match because it was it's a six-man tag. Uh, he was tagging with John Cena and some other uh, face wrestler, and they were facing Alberto Del Rio, Punk, and another heel wrestler. Okay. Uh, at last word, Big Show was not in the uh, arena, but he could be running late. Show had been advertised for the Dark Man's Man event, but there was also plans for him to return to TV tonight, but could also have been changed. Which it was, because he wasn't there, so he might not even been there. He wasn't used on the program. Uh, regarding Kane, returning from his storyline injury, it's said that uh, Kane is just now taking time off to let his body rest while they're working up a storyline 
for his return. WWE Developmental Diva Tennille Taylor posted the following update on Facebook. Thanks for all the support. Just wanted to let you know. You all know I'm almost five weeks into recovery now. And the shoulder's feeling great. Still a ways to go, but the hard part is out of the way. So I'm excited to get back on track and plan for what's ahead. As noted before, Tennille is expected to start with WWE around 2012. And that's the main roster, supposedly. WWE is advertising that matches will be taped for TV at the Raw Live event on, in Lubbock, Texas on Sunday, September 25th at the United Spirit Arena. CM Punk vs. Alberto Del Rio for the WWE title is advertised is the advertised main event and Hall of Famer Dusty Rose will be the live event host. So that could be your spoiler for the next pay-per-view is Del Rio will keep the belt against John Cena and go on to face CM Punk. Okay, next up is... Okay, uh, Cena is uh, currently not scheduled for that Raw Live event the weekend of September 23rd, or any Raw Live events for September 23rd through the 25th. WWE's Ladder Match 2 called Crash and Burn DVD. Full content listing for WWE's The Ladder Match 2 Crash and Burn DVD set that comes out on October the 11th. And it's quoted by saying it's the veritable definition of high risk, high reward. In sports entertainment, a rich reward hangs high above the ring, and a superstar must climb a ladder to win the match and retrieve the prize. And the new way that they're doing it sucks that they used to have to grab the belt and come down to the floor with both feet. But the falls from the ladders can be devastating, and the punishment one can inflict when using the cold steel ladders as, as weapons can be brutal. The first ladder match DVD was uh, made, uh, came out in 2007. It was a, one of the biggest selling DVDs in WWE history. And now the ladder match is back with an all new collection of memorable bouts from WWE, WCW, ECW, and more in the ladder match too. Crash and burn. Disc one has the evolution of the ladder match. Ladder match for the Undisputed Intercontinental Championship, which has Shawn Michaels versus Razor Ramon. And that was from WrestleMania 20, uh, WrestleMania 10, uh, from March the 20th, 1994. Another ladder match, Tracy's Mothers from, from the Wild Ass Hunter Boys, or Smoking Guns back then, versus Chris Candido. And that was a uh, Smoky Mountain Wrestling, March 1994. A uh, ladder match for the WCW United States Championship was uh, Eddie Guerrero versus Six. But yeah, that's X Pac for those that didn't know. NWO, that was at NWO sold out. That was January 25th, 1997. And a ladder match for the Hardcore Championship, Mankind vs. Big Show. Uh, let's see, no, uh, Mankind vs. Big Boss Man from Raw. That was November 30th, 1998. And a ladder match for the WWE Championship, The Rock vs. Mankind. Fe uh, that was from Raw, Fe February 15, 1999. Setting the bar for drama was also on the, the disc one. Handicap ladder match for control of the WWE, Vince McMahon and Shane McMahon vs. Stone Cold Steve Austin. And that was on the King of the Ring, June 27, 1999. Ladder match, three count versus Young Young Dragons. And that was New Blood Rising, August 13th, 2000. And then you have Amazing Rewards, Serious Consequences, Ladder Match for the WWE Tag Team Championships. ENC, that's Edge Grayson, versus the Hardy Boys. And that was from Raw, September 25th, 2000. And now for this two, a whole nother level. It's called a uh, ladder match to unify the Intercontinental and European Championship 
RVD versus Jeff Hardy was, was on, it, on it. And that was from Raw, July 22nd, 2002. Ladder match for the WWE Tag Team Championship. Team Angle versus Eddie Guerrero and Tajiri. That was from Judgment Day, May 18th, 2003. Ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship. Christian versus RVD. <coughs> that was an episode of Raw, September 29th, 2003. And then you got a segment, a uh, different side of the Divas. Come on, this is a ladder match. DVD. When has the Divas had a ladder match? And the ladder match, oh, oh, well, here we go. The ladder match for an undisputed OVW Women's Championship. Again, it's not WWE. Katie Lee versus Beth Phoenix. That was from OVW, uh, December 23rd, 2006, and OVW is Ohio Violet Wrestling. Formerly under under WWE, well, they branched out on now they're back on their own again. Money in the Bank ladder match, Mr. Kennedy versus Sam Punk versus Edge versus Finley versus Jeff Hardy versus Matt Hardy versus Kane Booker versus Randy Orton. And that was from WrestleMania 23. April Fool's Day, 2007. The more the merrier match, uh, the latter match for the WWE Tag Team Championship. The Hardys versus the World Greatest Tag Team, one night stand, June 3rd, 2007. And then you got the latter match for the Intercontinental Championship, Jeff Hardy versus Carlito. Episode of Raw, December 10th, 2007. And then you got this three, somebody else's yard. TLC match for the World Heavyweight Championship, Undertaker vs. Edge, One Night Stand, June 1st, 2008. Ladder match for the WWE, uh, the World Heavyweight Championship, Chris Jericho vs. Shawn Michaels at No Mercy, that was October 5th, 2008. Money in the Bank ladder match, CM Punk vs. Kane vs. Mark Henry vs. MVP vs. Shelton Benjamin vs. Kofi Kingston. Versus Finley versus Christian. That was WrestleMania 25, April the 5th, 2009. Brand new concept. I guess it's when uh, when they brought out the, the new rules to the, the ladder match. Well, the Money in the Bank or whatever it's called. The Miz versus Randy Orton versus Chris Jericho versus Evan Bourne versus Ted DiBiase Jr. versus John Morrison versus Edge. Versus Mark Henry, Money in the Bank pay per view, July 18, 2010. And number one contenders ladder match for the WWE Championship, John Morrison versus Sheamus. That was the uh, pay per view TLC, December 19, 2010. And a ladder match for the vacant World Heavyweight Championship, Christian versus Alberto Del Rio Extreme Rules, May 1, 2011. Action packed, innovative, and dangerous. Blu ray extras. Include ladder match for the World Heavyweight Championship, Edge vs. Jeff Hardy Extreme Rules, June 7, 2009. Ladder match for the ECW Championship, Christian vs. Shelton Benjamin from TLC, that was December 13, 2009. TLC match for the WWE Championship, The Miz vs. Jerry the King Lawler, that was from Raw, Raw episode of uh, November 29, 2010. Ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship, Dolph Ziggler vs. Kofi Kingston vs. Jack Swagger, TLC, December 19, 2010, and that's, that ends your DVD set. Now, uh, happy birthday goes out to Paul Ellering, former Hall of Famer, WWE Hall of Famer, turned 50, 58 years old today, while former WCW Tag Team Champion Stevie Ray turned 51. WWE.com's latest superstar to superstar features Alicia Fox talking with actor Christopher Mintz Plassey about the movie Fright Night. Okay, uh, The Miz and Eve Torres will be appearing at the Steiner Sports Store in Garden City, New York on November 20th at 10 a.m. For those interested, call 1-800-242-7139 for more info. Tonight's WWE Raw will take place from or did take place from the Rexall place in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and will feature the build of the Night of Champions, advertised locally for tonight 
show was a six uh, six man action. Big show, Rey Mysterio and John Cena. We all know Rey Mysterio is injured now. And is taking his, his six month hiatus. So I guess if if it was even done, it would have been Big Show and John Cena versus probably a handicap match of R Truth, The Miz, and Alberto Del Rio. And like I said, so this must have been the dark match because it was not on Raw. Then two could be changed since Big Show's injury, or he may be returning to action tonight on Raw, which never happened. WWE was teasing that tonight's show will be an epic ed edition, and they were teasing a confrontation between WWE champion Alberto Del Rio and John Cena, which did happen. Vladimir Kozlov's first post WWE appearance will be on August the. 27th at KNS Russell Fest event in Essington, Pennsylvania. WWE explained Christian Christian's absence from Friday's episode of SmackDown on their website by saying that he didn't appear because he was beaten too bad by Randy Orton at SummerSlam. Okay. Uh, there, there was a there's a clip that I will show tomorrow night of uh, Snitsky and Lena. Former WWE Superstars commentary from WWE's new, oh my god, the top 50 incidents in, w, in WWE history. DVD set that comes out this week. We'll show tomorrow night's, like I said, I'll show it tomorrow, tomorrow night's results on SmackDown. You can also search for it on YouTube. That's where the uh, trailer is. WWE developmental talent, Hunico. Who had been performing as in Carl for the last two weeks, un up until this weekend, received praise from the WWE officials while on the main roster at the past few, uh, past two weeks. Like I said, some feel that he may be on the on the fast track to being called up from FCW in the next few months. As noted before, Udo may be called back up to feud with the original Sin Cara in a Sin Cara versus Sin Cara feud. I believe I said that last week. Uh, the Hall of Famer Stone Cold spoke with UK's Daily Star and revealed that there is a second season of WWE Tough Enough in the works. And here's a few more of, of the highlights from that. <coughs> he comments on CM Punk's storyline in SummerSlam. I really enjoyed it. It was like a breath of fresh air. He's telling it like it is. He's got himself a good contract now. And they are treating him like a top guy that he is. You know, when you're going going along with Katie Coda storylines, and something organic comes along, it's a good chance to make, make, make a lot of money. They threw, threw, they threw Triple H in there, and I just hope they play their cards right. It was interesting to see uh, pay-per-view SummerSlam. I saw Del Rio come, coming, but it will be interesting to see it working out. And then he uh, come as the rumors of he and CM Punk at WrestleMania 28. Look, I've heard the same things. I've say, said that that were I to do it, do it. To, uh, CM Punk would be the would be the man I, I would like to do it with. <clears throat> All the stars would have, have to align for that to happen. It would have been uh, uh, good for me financially. Good for me in terms of. Execu execution and storyline. Obviously, it would have uh, been a good, good for WWE and work work out for CM Punk too. I'm not I'm not starting up anything here, but it could happen. Yes, it yes will it happen? I don't know. The following matches were advertised for, uh, for tonight's Edmonton, Alberta, Canada for this week's episode of WWE Superstars: Sheamus versus Heath Slater and Daniel Bryan versus Drew McIntyre. The Miz stated the following on Twitter regarding tonight's Raw. Raw 9 p.m. tonight on USA Network. No more Subway. I'm done playing with the game. Millennium Wrestling Federation announced Monday that former WWE star, The Boogeyman, will be returning to the ring for, September, for Saturday, September 17th show in Melrose, Massachusetts. He is replacing Al Snow at the event. 
which is which is their tenth anniversary show. Hmm. Mike Bradley and Adam Santa attended the WWE Raw tonight in Edmonton and passed along the following updates from Superstar Television taping. Sheamus defeated Heath Slater, no details on how it went. And Daniel Bryan beat Drew McIntyre by submission. No details on how it went. And a special announcement that was made uh, on uh, local TV and also uh, USA Network and I think it was Sci-Fi as well. I know it was done on Sci-Fi because I was watching something on Sci-Fi earlier this week and they advertised a live WWE Smackdown on Tuesday night. But I didn't catch the date. Well, let's reveal this next week, August the 30th, which is Tuesday night. Smackdown that night will take place in Wichita, Kansas. <coughs> It'll be called Super Smackdown. It will also air in its usual time slot on Friday as well, September the 2nd. But it will be a replay of the live Tuesday show. And that's Labor Day weekend for those that don't, don't know or don't remember the date. And that begins uh, that Friday, and WWE and Sci-Fi may see it as a chance to avoid a ratings drop due to that. It's an interesting story to watch as WWE may look to move SmackDown if they fear UFC Fight Night on FX will take pl take a slight out a slice out of uh, WWE's viewership. I don't think it would, as I. I draw more attention and, and more viewers to Friday night and, and raise the water level for both shows more than it would hurt. Perhaps WWE and Sci-Fi feel differently. This is mo most likely not. And just a one-time scheduling move to trigger interest in SmackDown heading into the new fall season and to avoid Labor Day. But if the ratings surge, it could encourage more talk of moving it to the, to the Tuesday lineup. Every week. And here's your news about FCW and WWE uh, dropping another wrestler. Uh, Ted DiBiase Jr.'s younger brother, Brett DiBiase, who did a uh, run-in uh, in one of the, uh, one of the uh, matches earlier when they did the Legacy and what have you with Randy Orton. He was the guy that ran in. Well, he, he was recently injured. He came back and they were trying him as a referee. Didn't quite work out. And so they parted ways with him. And like I said, the brother of Teddy Biasi and the son of Million Dollar Man, Teddy Biasi Sr., will, will it says they have not officially released him, but will be released from WWE at the end of the month. So he's been giving. He was giving a two weeks notice, according to DiBiase Sr. Brett is currently in the, uh, in, still in WWE developmental, but has suffered through multiple knee injuries and it did not work out trying as a referee. DiBiase Sr. told Phil Strum of the Poughkeepsie Journal, it's been frustrating for Brett, but he has closure on his wrestling career after suffering numerous setbacks. So he's happy whether which way he goes. And now, okay, uh, I'll go back to it. Well, what else he said? When he realized he couldn't wrestle without being a pain, well, maybe we can go, go to the referee route. Well, then we have a fourth knee injury, and I got think, to thinking about that, and referees are actually up and down even more than wrestlers. Usually when we go down, we're going down on our back. When they go down, they go on their knees, DiBiase Sr. said. Brett will really officially be released at the end of this month. He's come home now. He's in great spirits. He's, he's sad that he hasn't worked out, that it hasn't worked out for him. But on the same token, he has been uh, very frustrated. And now the frustrations are all over. And he, he got closure. And now finally, raw results from tonight. Tonight's raw starts. I started off with Justin Roberts introducing Ricardo Rodriguez, who then is standing in the ring and introduces the WWE Champion Alberto Del Rio. 
who came to come to the ring driving a Lamborghini. And they said the, the Lamborghini was only a $200,000 car. And we were treated to a replay of last week's main event. And we were told that Rey Mysterio will miss several months of action due to what Del Rio did to him. Which is only storyline because it's not his arm injury, it's his knee. And Del, Rio, Del Rio doesn't get to say much as he, he is interrupted by John Cena. Cena comes out to the ring and reintroduces himself to Del Rio and says he is the guy that will take the WWE Championship and hurt Del Rio in the process as Del Rio just sits there, sits there and smiles. Oh really? Like do it right now. Okay. Uh, then we got uh, CM Punk's music hit as he comes down to the ring and asks if he is watching a rerun as Cena wants another title match. Punk says he's beaten Cena twice in, in high pressure situations and says that he, he should be the one getting a, a title shot. Del Rio steps in and says it is it his, it's his time and he says he's a WWE champion. Punk says he has a problem with, with getting screwed by the likes of Triple H, Kevin Nash, and even Jack Tunney. Punk then talks about the text message that Nash received and says that Cena would have probably been taken out as well had he won the match. Both Punk and Cena say that they want to cash in on their rematch loss as the two get into an argument over who will be facing Del Rio. Del Rio says he is ignoring both of them and says he, he, de he defended the title last week and he won't defend the title in, in front of can Canadians. Oh, that made the Canadian the Canada fans unhappy. Uh, Triple H music hits and out, um, out comes the COO and makes his way to the ring. Honor says El Rio will be in a match tonight, but it won't be against Punk or Cena. Triple H then tells Punk and Cena that he calls the shots and they can't just cash in on, on the rematch when they feel like it. As for who gets the rematch first, that will be decided in a match tonight between Punk and Cena themselves with the winner facing Del Rio at Night of Champions Pay Per View. <clears throat> well, match number one actually is uh, Alberto Del Rio versus John Morrison. Match starts with Morrison and goes on an attack and picks up with a couple of near falls in the process. Del Rio fights back. And connects with some kicks before working over Morrison's arm. Morrison is able to block an attempt at a suplex and, and sends Del Rio through the ropes. Morrison then leaps down to the floor, but Del Rio is able to duck out of the way and sends Morrison hard into the guard wheelie as they go into the, uh, into the commercial. We turn from the commercial to the match and Del Rio is still in control of, of the match and is working over Morrison's neck. Del Rio picks up a couple of near falls after hitting some power moves, but Morrison is able to kick out. Del Rio then sends Morrison into the corner, and Morrison sends Del Rio over the ropes onto the floor in an act of desperation. <sighs> and when he hit the, hit the floor, he hit, he hit his head pretty hard on, on the classic flooring. Morrison begins to fight and find his way back into the match when Del Rio returns. But it's short-lived as Del Rio hits a German suplex and picks up another near fall. Del Rio comes up, goes for the cross arm breaker, but Morrison counters and nearly pins him with just a roll-up, I believe. Uh, Morrison picks up another near fall after hitting a hurricane right on Del Rio. Uh, Morrison then hits uh, Rio with a flash kick and sets up for the starship pain, but... Del Rio moves out of the way and Morrison lands on his feet. Del Rio then sends Morrison into the steel the ring post as it was a slow like little toss in the ring post and Morrison hurt, was uh, complaining about just acting like his shoulder was hurting and thus is your end of the match submission. <coughs> uh, uh, but uh, let's see. He rolled out of the way Del Rio, then sends Morrison into the still ring pose, but Morrison and a crossbar arm breaker to finally put 
Morrison away, submit to pick up the win. After the match, Del Rio applies a cross arm breaker once again as the referee tries to break it. And but it's not in the ring, it's not on the floor. Del Rio finally let, lets up, lets go, and he poses while poses with the title and, and the announced team hypes tonight's main event between John Cena and Sam Boat. Kelly Kelly and Eve are seen backstage, and we're told that the Divas will be in action after commercial break. Yet they said Divas, and it was only one on one match. Nikki Bella versus Eve. Kelly Kelly will accompany Eve to the ring for the matchup. Prior to the match, we hear from Beth Phoenix and Natalia who say that they don't want to be like Eve and Kelly Kelly as they are not wearing any makeup on their faces. But what they, they do want are they are not going to say. The bell rings and Nikki sends Eve out, out to the floor where Bree helps her sister when the referee has his back turned, throws her back in the ring. He, uh, well, she comes back in the ring herself. Eve takes Nikki down with a side suplex and a clothesline before hitting a standing moonsault for a near fall. Eve hits the top rope, but uh, where Bree distracts Eve, as Nikki tri trips up Eve and sends her traction to the mat, Nikki isn't able to follow up though, as Eve quickly takes Nikki down and out with a neck breaker for, her, for the pinfall. After the match, Kelly Kelly comes in and takes out Bree as uh, she was trying to get involved. As Beth Phoenix and Natalia come out on, on stage and sarcastically applaud their match. Kevin Nash is seen walking around backstage area, and we uh, we head into a commercial break. And he shakes uh, one of the one of the guys backstage's hand as he goes around the corner. Vicky Guerrero comes out after the break and introduces her potential client, Jack Swagger. The two walk down to the ring for a rematch from last week. And it matches up with uh, Jack Swagger versus Alex Riley. Swagger starts out. Strong against Riley and slams him down hard on the mat. Riley comes back and hits the swag Swagger with a spine buster. And Dolph Ziggler makes his way down to the ring to confront Vicky. Uh, Ziggler says he that she doesn't need any, any more clients as, as he accidentally knocks her down. Swagger is distracted as, as he goes out to the floor to confront Ziggler and pushes pushes him down. When Swagger returns, actually he doesn't push him down, he just pushes him away. When Swagger returns, Riley rolls him up for the pinfall and Vicky, as Vicky and Ziggler argue up the entrance round. Triple H is then seen backstage talking on the phone as he will be confronting Kevin Nash in the ring. And that was up next. Uh, during that Vicky Guerrero segment, I had to, I took my uh, restroom break, and thus I missed part of the match. Okay, Triple H makes his way to the ring and says that they, uh, there has been a lot of controversy over Kevin Nash's involvement at SummerSlam. They want to explain what happened, he, he calls out Nash in the ring. Nash comes out to the ring, and as Nash says, he thought he was doing Hunter a favor. Nash says he was going to apologize to CM Punk, but decided... I guess it after what Punk said last week. Triple H reminds Nash that he doesn't work for WWE and says he can't ha ha he can't be having him call guys out. Hunter says he can take out he can take out take Punk take out Punk, but he can't do it here. Triple H then asks Nash to leave as Punk Punk's music hits. Punk demands to know who who sent the text message. He wonders if it could have been Kevin Nash, Triple H, or maybe it was Stephanie McMahon. And that's who he said it. He, he was predicting. <clears throat> Punk says he is now doing talking and he is going to kick, kick Nash's ass right now. Triple H takes steps between them and asks, asks Punk, asks him why is he scared of Punk being the WWE champion. Hunter t tells Punk that if he crosses the line with him, he will leave him lying. Punk continues to talk trash to Hunter. As Nash clubs him across across the head before both Triple H and, and Nash leave the ring. Triple H and Kevin Nash are seen backstage as Hunter tells Nash that he, he can't be putting his hands on, on the wrestlers. 
Triple H that tells him that he needs to go is as Nash says, the hunter has cha has has changed before leaving. Match number four, Kofi Kingston and Evan Bourne versus David Otonga and Michael McGillicuddy for the WWE Championship and we have new champions tonight. The match starts as Evan Bourne and King Kingston start out fast against McGillicuddy. Uh, Kingston picks up a near fall after hitting a high cross body block, block but Otonga distracts Kingston by dragging his partner out, of, out to the floor. Kingston follows and Miguel Cuddy takes him out from behind to turn the momentum of the match. The tag champions being and begin to pick apart Kingston and isolate him to, to their side of the ring. Miguel Cuddy begins to take take his time, which gave, gives Kingston an opportunity to take him down with a head scissors and make make the hot tag to Bourne. McGillicuddy Cuddy tags in Otonga as Bourne comes in and takes out both of his opponents. Bourne then hits Airborne on Otonga to pick up the pinfall and the new championship as Kingston and Bourne are the new tag team champions. New tag team champions celebrate their victory as JR says he can't wait to see how the new champions heat up the tag team division. And JR made comment on the current tag team <clears> the <throat> current tag team is not holding up to, to uh, their uh, capabilities. Okay, uh, Josh Matthews is backstage with a new tag team champions. As Kofi Kingston says, the last few weeks have been unbelievable. A few of the wrestlers from the undercard then come out and dump champagne on the new champs. There was one guy I didn't even recognize on there. I ain't seen him in a long time. Uh, Triple H is walking backstage as John Laronitis tells Hunter that Kevin Nash has, has been in a car accident. Laronitis gives, gives him the, the number to the hospital and says he can handle things while he is gone and we head into commercial break. Set up. I smelt set up all along. On this particular thing. <laughs> Well, Santino Morella is, uh, was coming out for a match and is attacked from behind by none other, other than Miz and R-Truth. The two take, take him out in, uh, in the ring before the Miz grabs the microphone. R-Truth says Triple H, Kevin Nash, Stephanie McMahon, CM Punk and John Zena are all in on, on conspiracy. Truth says both, both he and the Miz were in pay-per-view main events, but that has all changed since Triple H has took over. Miz uh, then, then has a mic and he, he says our truth is right. And he, he was he was main eventing WrestleMania and now just doing something in, like he has to pick a fight with Jared from some way. Uh, Miz says he is sick of seeing people like Santino on Raw and is sick of being un, underutilized. They say instead of waiting for opportunities they're going to go out and make their own. Then we have CM Punk and John Cena are seen walking backstage as the main event is about to happen. Alberto Del Rio and John Laronitis are sitting around the broadcast table for the main event. Again, a smell of skunk. <clears throat> CM Punk vs. John Cena winner faces Alberto Del Rio at United Champions pay-per-view. In a funny moment, John Cena tosses his shirt out to the crowd and they toss it back at him in the ring. The bell sounds and the two trade off moves in the early going. Cena finally hits a couple of shoulder blocks and sets, sets up for the five knuckle shuffle, but Punk roll, rolls him up for a near fall. Punk then takes control of the match and connects with a running knee and a bulldog. Punk then hits the top rope, but Cena knock, knocks him down to the floor as we go into commercial break. Returning from the break and back to the match to see, uh, to see Punk in control of the match and takes takes Cena down with a backdrop. Cena is able to counter Punk's offense and goes for the attitude adjustment, but Punk is able to hold on to the ropes. Punk takes Cena down and goes for the GTS, but Cena counters and takes Punk down with his STF. Punk, though, is able to drag his way to, to, to the ropes and he breaks the hold. Punk then side steps Cena as he, he hits the ring post 
and Punk connects with a GTS, but Cena is able to kick out. Punk then heads to the top rope, but takes too much time and misses with an elbow drop. As he does, he tried to do the cla the uh, the Macho Man elbow setup. Ooh, top rope and misses. It was a sloppy elbow drop. Okay, Cena then climbs to the top and connects with a leg drop, but Punk is also able to kick out. Punk gets to his feet and Cena tries for another attitude adjustment, but Punk elbows his way out and drops Cena with a running knee. Cena is able to kick out and takes Punk down with the attitude adjustment, but Punk again kicks out. Both wrestlers are slow to get up, but Cena backs Punk into the corner as the two fight on the turnbuckle. Punk pushes Cena down. Hits a crossbody block, but Cena rolls through and pick, picks up a close close count. Punk is able to counter, though. Punk rolls Cena up for, for a near fall as well. Before dropping Cena to the mat with a kick to Cena's head. With Cena laid out, Punk picks up Cena and as Nash comes out with a microphone and says he isn't done with Punk yet. Nash begins to walk towards the ring as, as Cena picks up a distracted Punk and takes him out with the attitude adjustment and picks up the pinfall. Kevin Nash then turns around and leaves as Alberto Del Rio quickly runs out to the ring and takes out Cena. After beating on Cena for a while, John Aronitis comes into the ring and pulls Del Rio off, off of Cena. Del Rio backs off for a moment before charging at Cena again and hitting him with the, the WWE Championship. Del Rio takes, takes Cena out to the floor and sends him into the guard railing as Laurinaitis pulls Del Rio away again as the Raw goes to a close. So, your quick results, Alberto Del Rio defeated John Morrison by submission. Eve defeated Nikki Bella by pinfall. Alex Riley defeated Jack Swagger by pinfall. Kofi Kingston and Evan Bourne defeated David Tonga and Mike, Michael McGillicuddy by pinfall to win the Tag Team Championship. And John Cena defeated Sam Punk to become the number one contender and to face Alberto Del Rio at Night of Champions pay-per-view. Thank y'all for listening to my rant and rave and that is going to be the end of the results for this week. Stay tuned for tomorrow night. I will have the Smackdown results along with internet NXT and also the SmackDown version of Superstars. And the reason why I didn't post, uh, didn't do a video last week, I didn't have internet access, due to the fact I had, was moving and have moved, and now I'm here. Thanks and peace out. Comment on the new look, whether I should keep it or trash it. Don't matter. I'm still keeping the Street Fork Connection sign. And it may change names later. Just to see how it goes, but I still like the Street Fork Connection on my own because I made it up myself with some other friends of mine that have uh, moved on with other things in their lives. Thanks and have a nice day and week. Again, tomorrow night. Stay tuned.